Aloha, welcome to Cadell Cuisine. I'm Nadia Cadell, and today I'm going to show you how to make some chicken long rice. This is such a flavorful dish. If you grew up here on the islands like my brother and I did, this is such a memory filled dish because it's similar to what maybe chicken noodle soup would be on the mainland. But for us, it has such great flavors. There's ginger in this, there's these white noodles that are like thicker than what you're used to and just so much flavor. So the beauty of Hawaii is that we really, really get to enjoy so many different cultures. It's such a big melting pot of cultures and along with that is all of the foods and the traditions that have kind of come along with it. So this is one of those that is really, really nice to be able to enjoy. We've been having so much rain on the island. So we thought we'd share this one today to be able to kind of make on a rainy day and such a great comfort food. So let's get started. I'll show you how to get all of these amazing flavors and let's get going. Let's grab a spoon and we'll eat. So to start us off with this recipe, I'm gonna make sure to pull out a large enough pot with a lid. I really like to use Dutch ovens. They're my favorite because of that cast iron. They really help to conduct heat and it's even and consistent. If you've got one, I'd say pull it out and use it. If you don't, that's okay. Just as long as you can get a large enough pot that has a lid, a sturdy lid. This just really helps with all of the flavors and to make sure that everything cooks evenly. So moving on, we're gonna add some garlic. I added a little bit more than what the original recipe that we're using here called for. Again, this is kind of a little bit of a riff off of it, so it's up to you how much garlic you'd like to use. And for this recipe, it said that I could smash it. I like to kind of mince it or smash it all together. Totally optional, but up to you. Another thing I like to do is to sort of set aside those ingredients just because it just makes it a lot easier for me to be able to work with them later. So prepare that. Getting your ginger ready. I like to just shave it and peel it. I know people do this in so many different ways with the spoon, but this is just the way I find easiest. And just chop off the sides that are harder to peel, set them off to the side. And now that I've put a little bit of water just to get things boiling, I like to use this chicken stock. You're welcome to use whatever chicken stock you'd like. But with this chicken stock, <laughs> excuse the ambulance, it's kind of flooding over here on Kauai, so please excuse the noise. Um, but with this chicken stock in particular, I really like the flavors. It's super important with this recipe to use one that you know has a lot of flavor. Don't skip out on the flavor for this one. So. Totally optional, but once you do that, you're making sure to leave that on medium or low. Get it going. And in the meantime, I'm gonna shred some of this ginger. I like to shred it because my friend taught me how to do it this way. She says the flavors really kick off this way, but if it's too hard to shred, you can also kind of slice it thinly like you're seeing me do here, and then kind of just dice it up. Very optional. So at this point my um, broth has sort of started to warm up and this is when I like to add in the garlic and the ginger. All the flavors will start going. So after that, I'm gonna use some Hawaiian salt. If you are here on the islands, you know this is everywhere, Walmart, the grocery store. So if you can pick some up, it really helps kick off those flavors. This dish is originally a Chinese dish, Chinese Hawaiian dish, kind of a blend of those two cultures. So if you can use some Hawaiian sea salt, why not? And so now the chicken. This is really important to use a chicken that is skin, then the bone is in, and this is chicken thigh that I'm using. So now I'm gonna put this on medium, and we're gonna spend about 40 minutes with this on the stove. About 40 minutes gives you enough time to really get those flavors and that chicken cooked. In the meantime, I'm gonna chop off the little onion butts, as I like to call them. Make sure to keep those roots together. And I like to add these in a little container with some water and then just kind of set them off outside in the sun when we have sun. Um, and these will really help to regrow and then I can plant them in my little herb garden, kind of like you see here. It just helps me be able to have an endless supply of green onions. And I typically try to do the same with the rest of our herbs. It helps with the fresh kitchen. So. Moving on, we're gonna have some um, green sliced onion, thinly sliced green onion. 
And I'm just getting this ready because I'm gonna use half of this amount for the soup or slash stew. And then the other half I'm gonna use as garnish and kind of to top it off. So at this point you have that set off to the side. And now my soup, it's past 40 minutes and I'm gonna get things together. This is the bean thread or long rice noodles that you're gonna use. It should look like this. Our Costco has it, maybe your grocery store has it, but it should look something like this. Now you wanna most importantly is hydrate or rehydrate these noodles. So I'm gonna put them off in a bowl and I'm gonna grab some cold water and just make sure to completely soak these noodles. You're not gonna use that water later, so just make sure that you have them completely submerged. This will take about 30 minutes or a little bit longer depending on how long it takes for the hydration process. So I've taken the chicken thighs out. They've been cooling for about 15 minutes or so. And now I'm gonna make sure to shred it, take the skin off, shred off the bone, and set that off to the side. Now, as you can tell, I'm gonna be dicing an onion. This is another trick a friend of mine taught me with flavors for this soup. And I'm gonna to toss that in that Dutch oven. As you can tell, I've taken out the broth, set it off to the side, taken out the chicken, shredded it, and now I'm gonna get ready to kind of put this together. After I have that whole onion in there, I'm gonna kind of mix things around. This is on a low heat, medium to low. And I'm gonna add in that chicken stock slash broth that we cooked those chicken thighs in with the ginger and the garlic. Just adding a little. I just want those onion pieces to really get some flavor and start to sweat. Now my husband really, really likes ginger and we consume a lot of it in this house. So I'm gonna cut a little bit more just to kind of prep some and julienne it, cut it really thin and then into little strips. Some of it's gonna be used for my garnish and some of it I'm just gonna dice up and add in for the flavor. So you can set that off to the side. <laughs> Excuse our roosters. So you set some off to the side and then if you're like us and you really like ginger, it's got so many benefits, you can kind of dice that off and add it into the pot. A little bit of pepper to throw off some of the flavors or add to the flavor. And then this is a big tip, fish sauce. I know it kind of sounds wild, but this is what's really gonna add in an extra kick of umami flavor. My friend taught me this and it has changed my chicken long rice flavor altogether. I'm doing a tablespoon of that. And I'm doing it at this part of the recipe because I really want my garlic and onion to pick that up. So I'm also about 10 minutes in flipping my noodles just to make sure they're completely hydrated as they go through this process. Another small pinch or two of that Hawaiian sea salt if you've got it. If not, whatever you've got on hand is totally fine. So I'm now mixing all of this in. I really, really wanna make sure that this flavor and this base has started to get to know each other. The fish sauce, you can really smell it, it's delicious. And at this point, I'm gonna add in my shredded chicken. I do it at this stage for the same exact reason that all of those flavors that we've been working on really get absorbed in the chicken. I find that that's what really gives this soup that amazing flavor. About five to 10 minutes later, I feel happy about all of that. And I'm gonna start adding in that broth that we cooked the chicken in. It should still have that garlic and ginger in it. And just add it in little by little. So once it's all incorporated, you can set your timer for about 15 to 20 minutes. I do it this way because it gets all of the flavors going together. And I've added some green onion, about half of what we just cut up. And now we are ready to add in our noodles. At this point, you can take some scissors, some kitchen scissors, and cut the noodles in half. I promise you this will help the eating process so they're not as long. Or you don't have to, you can opt out as well, but this is a good time to add in the noodles. They've been soaking for about half an hour. If yours don't look quite hydrated yet, give it another maybe 10 to 15 minutes. 
So once you've done that, you can make sure to really stir everything in, make sure that it's incorporated. Add that lid. And for about half an hour, 25 minutes, you're gonna let this kind of sit at about a low to medium heat. Now the way to make sure that this soup is done is by checking your noodles. So if you pull them out and you see that they're translucent or clear, you are ready to go. If they aren't, if they're still sort of white, just give it a few more minutes until you reach that point. So it looks like we're about ready to go. Now I've found that I can serve this easier if I first use some tongs and then a ladle. I've tried to do this many times just with a ladle. It's super difficult, but whatever you'd like to do is totally fine. So you ladle some of that chicken and the broth, and now you're ready for some green onions, and now you can put some of that julienne ginger slices that you've had. I hope you enjoy. Thank you so much for following along. I hope you've been able to see that this soup type dish is not very difficult, but as you can tell with all of that ginger, it's just such a soothing, warm dish. If you're not in Hawaii and you're not experiencing the amount of rain we're experiencing right now, but it's cold and rainy outside or snowy, this is such a great dish to prepare together and the flavors only get better. Real quick before you go, I just wanted to show you the um, book. This is called the Aloha Kitchen Book. This is such a great gift if you're not able to make it on the islands right now, but you're missing all of the foods, the culture, the cuisine. I definitely recommend it. I know that Amazon has it, our Costco has it. It's a really great one. So today's recipe was a kind of a riff off of the recipe that I found in here with a few extras like the fish sauce and the onions um, to kind of add to it. So we'll keep doing that. We'll make some more of these recipes and um, continue to share it. So thank you so much to everyone that has reached out asking for specific different types of Hawaii cuisine. I'm gonna get going on those and kind of get that going for you guys. So thank you so much for that. As always, just so, so excited um, with all of the subscribers and the likes and the comments. It just helps us to continue, as you guys know. So thank you so much. I'm gonna try to bring out some more videos for you. I think we've got poke in the mix, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, I hope you enjoy your chicken long rice and have a beautiful day. Aloha, everyone.